like being the kids who like wanted to learn but they couldn't learn to like the kids who had to learn but like hated it like it was like this huge contrast for me where I was like I was like I don't know if like I want to enter like a school district and teach people who don't want to learn like it was not appealing to me but then again like my co was awful <laughs> and like I didn't have a good time student teaching like the boy that I talked to who was just thought just student taught at Moline like he had a great time, so like I think if I did have a great time, I might not be doing what I'm doing. But okay, but that's like beside the point. Okay, <laughs> so um, yeah, but I still really like education. Like I still really like the field. I think it's so interesting, and like I'm so interested by like what and like why it's so important that we have methods and like that people are educated. I think that's so important. So I kind of graduated. Or no, before I graduated, um, I had a friend who got accepted to the University of Cambridge, and I was like, why are you going to school in London? I was like, that sounds dumb. So then like, she kind of convinced me, and I was like, okay. So then like, I looked online rather than thinking about applying for teaching jobs. And then like I stumbled across this one because the admissions were already open. They're actually still open, so if you want to apply, it's still open. But So I just kind of like randomly applied for it because it was really easy. You don't need to take the admission test for graduate school here. So I was like, okay, that's a win-win. I don't need to take another test. So I kind of applied and like I had seen other programs, but you couldn't apply till later. So I was like, whatever, I was like, I'll just apply to this one and if it doesn't work out, like I'll apply later. Um, but then I got in, so I was super excited. And so obviously I did not apply to any other schools because <laughs> I'm very lazy. Um, so then like, I graduated and I kind of realized over the summer that like I couldn't afford graduate school. I was like, this is way too expensive. Like, this is not really gonna work. So like I deferred because I was like, I don't know what else to do. Um, so then all summer I was like, since I'm not going to grad school, I didn't really know what to do at all. I was on LinkedIn because I thought I was a responsible adult and that's what those responsible adults do is create LinkedIn accounts. So <laughs> I did that <laughs> and like, like there were some things, like I was a daycare teacher for like a week and then I quit that because I was awful. Don't do that. No one do daycare. It's terrible. It's mm -hmm. the worst. Um, it's literally horrifying. <laughs> After the first day, I was like, never mind. I'm not doing this. Um, but then like I like looked at stuff that was like abroad and I found um, an ESL teaching job in Thailand and I was like, that's interesting. Um, so like. I was kind of like, well, I could do that. I was like, if I want to go to school in a different country, I should probably learn about other different countries. Um, so I like applied for that. Um, again, this is kind of like, it was like a super sketchy agency where like, where like, <laughs> I didn't need to have like a TEFL thing, which is like a teach English as a foreign language degree. I didn't need that. I'm not going to recommend the agency that I went to for this. There's better ones. But so like, I kind of just like ended up there. I had an interview. I got the visa or whatever. Um, and I was like, I, I got assigned to kindergarten when I said I wanted secondary kids, so already that was weird. But like, okay, whoever, who here is on the fence about whether they want to teach in America slash teach in general? Is anyone on the fence? We got a couple I see of you. Right? Yeah, going up. Yeah. Okay, good, excellent. Okay, my biggest thing of advice, go teach somewhere in Asia. Like, actually just go teach in Thailand. Like, it was amazing. I would still be teaching there if I didn't already defer, like, I was a kindergarten teacher and like all these kids are like two to seven they were two to seven years old they were like freaking out every time they saw me i was basically like a celebrity <laughs> and like it was so fun oh my gosh it was so fun like they'd come up to me i should have brought pictures i didn't think about that until like an hour ago and they were so cute and like they want to learn english so bad that it's so much fun and like the school that I was at, it was at, like just opened like a year ago, and it was a private kindergarten. And I'm gonna use like an English term right now, like a London British term. Um, and I got to basically be like a head teacher, so I was like head of the English department there. So I got to like develop the whole curriculum with the uh, with the principal. So that was really fun because it's like in the states when I student taught, it was like here's all the things you must teach. Like teach all of this. You don't have a choice. Teach it however you want. But you have to teach all of this. And then here she was like here's vaguely what I want you to teach. And I'm like, this is what I'm going to teach. This is what I decided. And she was like, okay, cool. So <laughs> it was like, it was a lot of fun. Like I would still be there, honestly. It was amazing. Um, like it kind of just reminded me like why I like education so much. Cause like when I had first <coughs> started, like the kids didn't, the kids like knew how to sing the alphabet kind of, but they didn't know anything else. And like 
by the time it was over, like the kids and I could have conversations. We would talk about like Spider-Man and like Mario a lot, which I still don't really understand. <laughs> we talked about that like all the time and that was so fun. And like the kids were sarcastic with me at one point and like that's amazing for like a seven year old to understand sarcasm in a different language. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> so that made me like really happy. But um, a thing that kind of like pushed me back to grad school was like, it's kind of like the Malawi thing. Um, this is like a very side note. This is like a tidbit. It's like a sad tidbit that you can share with people in your reflections. This is really sad though. So the thing in Thailand is that the king is, <laughs> I'm sorry if this is like a boring history lesson. I just think this is so interesting, so I'm sorry. But um, so in the public schools and just in schools in general, they don't really, the king doesn't really want them to learn English or understand it or study it because the system is very backward. So like, he wants out he wants all like the levels of like income and the classes to stay where they are so like he's afraid if they learn english that they'll like become more aware and more knowledgeable of like what else is out there and that like that'll disrupt society so like they don't really so like kids will just pass in english like they don't have to show up like doesn't really care so like that kind of also like um kind of like made me realize like how important education is because the reason the school that I worked at was founded was so that the one boy could like learn English because he was the, the lady's nephew so like that he could learn English and could like grow out of society so like when I found out about that like that still like affects me that like people can control education to the point where like the kids aren't learning for like certain reasons and I'm sorry this is like still like I oh okay so <laughs> that was just a tangent so I'm sorry um so I'm officially halfway done with graduate school. No, next week I'm halfway done with graduate school. My school's only a year long. So I only have two semesters and I have my dissertation slash thesis over the summer. So I'm already like halfway done. Um, it's easier than I expected, which is not true of all graduate schools, but like my schools, my, both my classes only meet once a week for two hours. And then each of them only have one assignment so it's like a kind of like a joke but you're not supposed to say that about graduate school so um <laughs> so it's like it's good like i'm taking education policy in the city and that's kind of what my major is and i'm taking school effectiveness and school improvement so like that's more about like the logistics behind how you measure schools and how schools are good don't get me started about that one because that one makes me frustrated all the time but it's good <laughs> um Next semester, I'm taking comparative education, international education, which is kind of like what my interests were, and I'm taking business management and education, which will be interesting. It's with a lecture that I don't like, but we'll go with it. Um, I'm excited for my thesis. Um, it'll be good. I'm not going to go into that either because it's really long-winded and it's not. Um, so like, I know Dr. Shaw was like, you are so inspired. No, he didn't say that. I'm sorry. He did not say that. He was like, we should hear about your journey. And like, I don't. Like, I don't really have an end point, so I don't really have any, like, good advice for you. I'm sorry. Like, I thought I was going to have, like, this great end goal, but, like, the people I'm friends with in London, they're all, like, business and finance people. So now I'm kind of looking at, like, like the business portion of education and, like, getting stuff done via business. Um, so it's definitely not what I intended to do with my degree at all. But I don't know. I'm, like, interested in the business portion. Um, component of it so we'll kind of see where that what that happens um but like I do know that like right now a main point and like I think you guys have read this by now that like the higher you get in education like the more cynical you become of your field because you know more and you're less ignorant about it so like I've kind of like experienced that already as like a graduate student so like if you don't want to be cynical and you don't want to like hate a lot of things about education, don't go higher. Um, Cause like basically all of my lectures are just like, oh, this is the worst. Like, don't do this, this is the worst. So like, I know that like part of my journey has led me to be like, I can criticize the educational field. And, like, I can do that. That's not hard. You can, ed you can criticize everything, but like, I kind of like at the end of the day, want to be like part of the solution part. So like, I don't know what's next because like, it's one thing to talk about problems and to discuss them, but like it's another thing to like solve them. So I want to kind of get into like the solving education problem aspect of things. But I don't 
That's not a good advice. I'm sorry, that's not advice at all. Um, uh, Jillian, can I yeah. interrupt for a second? Yeah, sure, go for it. Well, I think, no, I think for me, what this, what, what you've just said is, I mean, is, is riddled with advice because you're telling, my, one of the things I'm getting out of this is that you can have an experience while you're a doggy and it's a random you know, experience at, at the time, meeting some students in the streets of Malawi and then all of a sudden it's gonna take you on a journey that, um, that's gonna lead you through all sorts of interesting places, right? And it's not necessarily about, you know, we get so focused about the end point, getting the job, yeah. right? Getting oh, yeah. the job. You know, as like that is the goal in life to get the job. And yes, employment helps. Right? <laughs> yeah, yes. Money, money does. Money is nice, especially after graduation, yes. right? Debt is bad. Yes. Money is good. You know, we, we we preach that a lot as well. Um, but there's so much more to life than the job. There's the journey, right? Yes. Isn't there? The that, and that's sure, that's yeah. I don't know to encapsulate some of the things I've picked up from your presentation. We have a few minutes left. Um, I don't want to cut you short at all, but I also want to give some time for some questions. Oh, yeah. Is that okay? Ahead. Questions away. They probably don't have any. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not going to like one. Freak. Kelly has one. one. I have one for you, Jill. Yay. So you commented on during student teaching that one of the hard aspects was um, having students showing up to your class and not wanting to learn. And I was just curious why you decided to go the policy route than like choosing to go on in history and teach college at the collegiate level where you're more likely to get the students who want to learn in your classroom? Um, like, I thought about teaching at a college level, but, like, then, again, I would have to have, like, the master's degree, but, like, the policy aspect, I think, is interesting because it's, like, because of, like, there were so many regulations and standards in the classroom, like, there's got to be justification as to why there's, like, that. So, like, I'm kind of learning as to, like, why there's, like, the common core. That's actually what one of my essays is going to be on, like, why No Child Left Behind is a thing. Like, so, like, it kind of, like, makes me understand why all of those things that I didn't like are a thing. And, like, that's actually been really helpful and kind of been, like, now, like, taking a step back and reflecting on I'm like, oh, okay, well, this all makes sense. I just hated it. <laughs> but, like, but like it made sense. Like there is a purpose to it. So like that's actually been like really rewarding and made everything come full circle. So that's been really nice. Cool. Um, Other questions? Especially people are, here, go ahead, Drew. Oh, um, hi. I Hello. also had a very horrible student teaching experience. So I totally no. feel you. Yeah, but it was a while ago because I'm old. So it was a while ago, so I'm totally understanding where you're coming from. Um, but I'm just wondering now, has this renewed your fire to be a classroom teacher, to be a history teacher, to be an international <laughs> teacher? Because you're saying you understand why all this stuff is in the classroom, and so that kind of makes you, even though you hated it, you at least understand the reasoning. So I'm just wondering if you're feeling like, okay, I get this now, I know what I can do, I want to go back, or if you're thinking like, no, I want to be more of a intellectual, like academia kind of person. See, like, I do think about being like a teacher again, and I'm like, this would be really cool to like, or like maybe be like a teacher in like a different country, but then like a lot of the classes are like, Full, full time teachers who teach in London, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't miss anything. I'm like, this is like, they're so stressed out and they're so cynical. So I'm just kind of like, I don't know if I want that yet. Like, and like, a big thing for me is that I feel like if I get a teaching job, I feel like you're kind of stuck, which, like, don't, I'm sorry, that like, I don't want anyone else to be Well, like, I feel like I'm, I'm on like, my I third like, teaching job. So let me tell you, you are not stuck. You can change a lot. Yeah, but like I feel like I'm stuck in terms of like you need to get tenure and like you need to stay in one place for like a while and like based on my story I travel like a lot. <laughs> so like feeling stuck is not something that I like. But like by all means, I'm not telling anyone that they should not like don't feel like that. <laughs> like it's better if you don't feel like that. But yeah, I just don't I guess like I want a reason to settle down, but I don't want to know if it's necessarily because of like teaching. I don't think that is giving me a good enough reason to like stay in one place for a long period of time. If that makes sense. If that didn't answer your question, sorry. No, I understand. <laughs> well, I think it, to me it seems like you're you're wrestling with that question. Where can you be a, make the biggest difference too? You know, classroom yeah. teachers are hugely important, but also we need people who are important, interested, and passionate about policy. 
you know, yeah. higher and levels. The right? boring, like the boring thing. <laughs> when you tell people that's what you're studying, they're like, ugh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> no. People but, who yeah. like gross things, though. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, like true. accountants. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for doing all the gross work that nobody else wants yeah. to do. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm here for you guys. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I want to make sure, uh, do we have uh, another uh, question before we wrap up here? I want to try okay. to keep us on here. Bethany Aldoin does. Yeah. Since you're taking these classes in policy and everything, do you plan on going into like <clears throat> politics and trying to change the policy? or? Um, that is an excellent question. I have thought about working for governments now. I've looked at internships for government work or like think tanks I think are really interesting and their, their impact has just grown in terms of like policy makers. So I have definitely thought about that stuff because like despite like lower level thinking about how much it sucks, like there's a lot that goes into it, then it's like really interesting and people coming up with the solutions. So yeah, I've definitely looked into it. So that might be a thing. That might be a thing. I change my mind all the time though, so who knows. <laughs> uh, Jillian, yeah, you are a true uh, free spirit and a doer, which I think is very cool. Okay. Like, no, I, no I, I mean that in the most sincere way you like to do things and I think it's uh, the classroom can be a hard place for people who are kind of restless like yourself so um, yeah. Dr. Schroeder just stepped in hey Jillian oh, I miss you I miss you too kiddo how you doing <laughs> I'm fine how are you good good doing great doing great thanks for joining us you're welcome you missed my whole thing but no <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm sitting in on like five different sessions at once, so. I know, you're a busy person, you yeah. get it. So, and we're, we are just wrapping up here, I want to make sure we're, we're on time, so. Yeah. Um, Jillian, uh, would it be okay if I passed along your contact information for anybody? Oh sure, use my Augie email, because I'm not a real adult, but I still use that email. So. <laughs> you, can use, you can still use that one, I um, checked that one. Wonderful, so, so if you didn't have a chance to ask a question of Jillian, and you would still have some, uh, I will make sure that uh, we get uh, her contact information, or you can look it up in the Augie email. So. Yeah, I should still be in that weird yeah. directory. I should it probably is. still be there. It, it is, yeah. And I'm using it on this call, too. So you can really FaceTime with Julian if you're really Yeah, that's to. true. If you want to get on that level. I mean, I probably won't pick up. But. <laughs> Being honest. Jillian, are you sitting in some sort of space station? Um, yeah, you know, it looks like an like unusual one. Uh, that my school has at the library because I was doing, I was having a big think session. My advisor likes to tell me about my stuff. So I'm in this weird pod in my school library right now. Wow. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jillian. Round of applause. For you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jillian. All right, well, take care. I'm going to sign off here, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, have a good rest of your day, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. See you, Jillian. Bye. Bye. Good luck. what it looks like to FaceTime a star.